Welcome Wargamers, join your hosts, Falco and Monty, two Canadian wargaming enthusiasts, as we explore all aspects of tabletop wargaming. We roll dice, talk tactics, share hobby hacks, and explore new tabletop systems, all on the Trident Wargaming Podcast. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Trident Wargaming. Today is another bolt action episode, and this is a visit back to our Stalingrad campaign series. Um, this will be our scenario three kind of overview of our battle that we just had. Today joining me is Jason again, of course, my battle buddy. How's it going, Jason? Ah, comrade. <laughs> So Jason is my uh, um, opponent in all these matches. So we've had some good chuckles and some uh, great times so far playing. So uh, we're frenemies. Yeah, frenemies. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> um, so if you haven't haven't checked us out yet, uh, we do have a whole bunch of other episodes um, for this campaign series. You can find it on our channel. Um, and if you have been following it, I hope you guys are enjoying it and whatnot. And of course there's going to be many more to come. So, um, I can say the least I can say is right now is this has been a very enjoyable, uh, the battles that we've been having. Um, yeah. so I know Jason's been having a great time with it too. So <laughs> I love them. I love them. You know, we've played, I've played bolt action for, you know, since first edition, and I've never got to go through the books. So hmm. I'm super stoked to actually go through. And I've always loved like, oh, that scenario looks great. But on a pickup game or whatever, they're, they're not always easy to to pull off with a rando, you know, a rando yeah. commando at the store. You know, you got to plan it out a little bit. So. Oh, for sure. It's, they're so fun. I'm so glad I'm able to. To pull it off and we're putting some time into them to try to do it as best we can oh 100 so 100 i'm stoked yeah with um you know um kind of going into the episode uh just a little bit of an overview of course we'll do our uh hobby sit rep of course of what we're working on and whatnot um which is is great because it actually kind of partakes in this actual scenario and and whatnot so, and I know Jason will go into detail about that. Um, but then we'll uh, go into the meat and potatoes of the episode of, of kind of an overview of our battle and things that happen and whatnot. And then uh, we got the pregame uh, workup for the next scenario as well. So, um, should be a good one. Um, have some good stories to tell about this battle. I'm sure of it. Um, but first, the hobby sit rep. So, currently, what have you been working on? Well, a whole bunch of, uh, believe it or not, scenery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I am uh, I got my City Fight board. You might have seen some pictures. Uh, half of which, by the way, was Andy. Those uh, factory buildings and the fence, which I love, even though they're so <laughs> finicky and rage-inducing. <laughs> <laughs> but they look so good. But uh, so now there's a couple of scenarios of grass. So I'm flipping the tables over and doing a grass side on those tables. Uh, you know, just so I can, I have grass mats and stuff, but sometimes you want different, you know, heights in the grass and I can use the grass mat for a hill and, you know, just to give a little uh, flexibility for, for what we're doing and for other games too. So be able to pull that up. So pretty simple and basic, but you know, time consuming. And I painted a civil war model. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. It takes what about uh, you. It's uh, for me. Well, it's putting on some finishing touches of the uh, the German forces that I just used um, mm -hmm. for assembly. Um, painting is a whole other story. Um, there's also the terrain 
little extra little bits here and there uh, for our campaign, plus some terrain that I have kicking around, right? Especially for down the road with the Stalingrad um, tractor factory and stuff. I got to get that going. I got to get some more train tracks built and, and ready. Uh, okay. So as it's mainly assembly right now. Um, and then painting is uh, one of the other systems we... Jason doesn't like talking about, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So pretty much really just kind of a little bit of a slow grind on, um, uh, just assembly and, uh, yeah, getting stuff prepped and, uh, definitely be relooking at the army itself, uh, for our next campaign, considering it's the same, um, army that I will be using just a little less points. So. Yeah. 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 That's kind of the nice thing about this next battle. Mm -hmm. uh, not to get, I don't need to get into it, but it does get a, a little bit smaller for you. And it's the same army. So it's a little less work to get into the next scenario. Mm -hmm. Whereas this scenario was a big leap from the last scenario. It took a lot of work. Yeah. Cause you ended up spending like, what, a good month? Yeah. Like doing, uh, doing scenery yeah for it and the good thing is is it's all city type scenery so we're kind of you know set for the basics of all of any other city scenario mm -hmm. you know some specific touches but it's a lot easier to do specific touches than a whole shabazz you know yeah and if you want it you actually do want to see what jason's talking about uh just check out our facebook page and our instagram page um, I have a whole bunch of pictures and even a video of uh, the actual table. Um, and you had it, what was the size of it? It was like an 8 by 10? Uh, six, 6 by 10, yeah. 6 by 10? Yeah. So, like, huge, huge board and looks awesome. And again, like I said, check out the, the pages. There's a little video clip of it there, too. Um, and, of course, I'll try to put some clips in here as well. But... Uh, it's awesome. Like this, the, the terrain makes, makes the whole battle happen. Right. Um, oh, so yeah. it's so important, just as important as the models, the minis, right. Just pulls you in, you mm -hmm. know, and it makes it, makes you, uh, when you have a full table, makes it more, uh, dynamic and complicated and sometimes frustrating, which I love. I think fighting through the adversity in a game is what makes it a good game, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, and and being able to handle all that uh, in a fairly simple manner makes uh, bolt action flow. No, totally, so totally agree with that for sure. We've seen some pretty uh, pretty neat tables and uh, terrain actually even being built by yourself. Um, but yeah, it makes it definitely makes the uh, the battle happen. Um, so going forward, uh, again, this is our Stalingrad campaign. It is Scenario 3, uh, Spartanovka. So it's actually page 26 of the uh, Stalingrad campaign book, um, if you'd like to follow. If not, we're pretty much talking about it here anyways. So, um, yeah, the mission itself was pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, we pretty much had to get over to the other side of the bridges. Um, there's three bridges across the board. And um, you get points for that. And then you would also get points for destroying the enemy units, right? Yeah. yeah. So, one, point, one point for each unit across the bridge or on the other side of the bridge from where you started. And that goes for both of us. The Soviets also get one point for each unit across the bridge uh, and one point for each unit destroyed. And the way the battle's kind of set up is that uh, the Soviets have a bit of an advantage uh, for destroying enemy units. And the, uh, the as in I get dug in, uh, my options give me kind of a lot more guns. Uh, and your advantage is... Uh, that uh, you're a lot more mobile because you have you kind of have to be 
right? Yeah. You have to do that uh, armored armored uh, division. So, um, so you're kind of uh, your meat and potatoes were get to the other side of the bridge, and mine was to destroy as much as possible. And if I can, maybe I can get a guy or two over the bridge on the other side. Yeah, it didn't that. quite happen that way, but no. But we like <laughs> playing playing the mission out. Like, I mean, we can go right into it for like the meat and potatoes of it. But um, there was a lot of key moments in our game that really, you know, pushed us to the brink of this is this is not good. Like, this is messing with me, right? Well, um, I can tell you. One is the very first shot and the very second shot of the game were two units destroyed. Yes. Uh, one being a uh, sniper shot at a uh, anti-tank gun, yeah. an anti-tank rifle, and the other one being a tank getting blown up, courtesy of another tank. <laughs> yeah, the Panzer, the Panzer IV there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. right off the bat, rolling pretty good, and uh, like you said, taking those units out, like that was a pretty good punch pretty good left hook yeah, um, I, I should I sh sorry to cut you out. I should point out my forces that I that I had brought just so you can kind of uh, get what I'm talking about I guess I got uh, I had brought I had 1500 points to play with yep and uh, so I brought obviously and it's from the uh, factory list the the tractor factory tractor list factory yeah that's in the book. So I brought three units of uh, people's militia. I brought, uh, uh, and all of them had guns. So 36 of those guys. And I brought uh, uh, two units of NKVD, 10 men each, uh, all SMGs, all fanatics, uh, but also an LMG in each squad. In case you didn't get across, I wanted to be able to, you know, reach out and touch you, you know, for the first turn or two if I could. Didn't end up happening that way, but that was the thought. And uh, I also got access to three Tractor Factory T-34s, mm -hmm. which were uh, pretty awesome uh, in that they're terrible. You have to take them, they have to be inexperienced. And they each have to start with a flaw and they have three flaws that you can choose from. And one of them is like, uh, uh, optics, not installed or damaged optics, something like that basically cuts my gun range, my main gun range down by half, which I didn't want. I needed those tanks to be able to reach out and, and touch you. If I could, if you, if you decided to hold your tanks back as a, as a long range support or something, I needed to be able to, to hit you. The other one was inexperienced, uh, uh, tractor factory worker crew, which basically means I had to, uh, take a test to do anything, basically kind of like the shirkers rule, right? Uh, to do anything, whether I had pins or not, I had to take a test to, to do any kind of order. And then the third one, which is the one that I took on all the tanks, is that any, I forget what they call the rule, it's uh, like uh, hastily repaired or something like that. It's any uh, uh, superficial hit counts as a penetration hit, a penetrating hit. So uh, risky, but uh, I think I needed the other two. The other two wouldn't have worked at all. So anyway, I had three of those uh, tanks. And uh, a commissar, the one that allows me to uh, negate the minus one for inexperienced infantry firing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a uh, senior lieutenant to give me a little bit of a leadership boost because I have so many, you know, uh, terrible troops. And uh, anti-tank gun, a ZIS-3. Uh, two anti-tank rifles, uh, artillery spotter, which was big, um, and a machine gun, a sniper. That's pretty much. Yeah, they're big forces for sure. Yeah, a lot of dudes, like 50, 
50 plus, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, when I set up, because I mean, for my army, I had transports plus armor, um, you know, Panzer four and a, a Stug, early war Stug, the light howitzer on it. Um, then I had the three squads from the, I believe it's, what is it called here? Uh, the uh, Armored Kampf Group Theater Selector. Ah, yeah, Kampf Group and yeah. Yeah, so like I had to take the specific uh, troops for the actual army. And every time you took that specific troop, you have to take a transport with it, right? So mm -hmm. I would have I would have Panzer Grenadiers. So like initially my um what I have to take is literally a, a Panzer Grenadier squad, a lieutenant, and then um a, another vehicle like Panzer or Stug or uh, pretty much whatever they have here. So you're already you're already eating up points heavily on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I ended up taking three Panzer Grenadier squads. Um, doubled up on the light machine guns, you know, uh, didn't really double up on the, the SMGs except for one squad I did. And then I took a pioneer squad as well. There was a sniper. Um, and then the, um, uh, machine gun team. So they kind of were holding the bridge sections. They were holding my side of the board. Uh, just laying down some fire, but yeah, trying to, my whole whole idea was to get over the bridge, rush the bridge using the tanks as uh, blockades, pretty much like to, to push through as, as cover. Um, unfortunately, while well, one side worked, the middle battle force did not work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, even though my first turn was pretty good for, for inflicting some casualties on Jason, um, he landed a solid artillery shot on probably the core of my army. Yeah, right right on the first turn, I was uh, I could see the buildup. I could see right what was happening. There's no way you could have hit it. You know, there's no way to be secret about it. You got three bridges uh, to come across. And really, one of them was pretty much only open to infantry, the way we set it up with the train kind of blocking part of the bridge. Yeah. Uh, so so really, you had only two that were open to uh, vehicles. So I, I knew you were coming across there, and I could see the bulk coming up the, coming up the center. So I knew right away, that's where I need to call my artillery strike. And I did, and it came in uh, on the the turn two there and mm -hmm. it hit and it hit hard it killed my commander a, man blew up a hannah meg killed the commander <laughs> like uh basically stranded your engineers yeah uh yeah. killed your commander caused enough pins on your on your stug that it it kind of sat there for most of the game oh the panzer four you mean or the Panzer IV, I yeah. mean, sorry. Yeah, it pretty much, uh, uh, like, it got that first hit, which was big. And I th I think it shot one more time, but missed. But but that was that was it. Otherwise, it was pretty much... Well, there was, like, four turns that... I mean, I, sh I, sh I should have failed, rallied. Failed. I should have rallied earlier. But, uh, yeah, it was, like, four turns that I just kept on failing my role, and it couldn't move because I was blocking it from my, with my transports just behind it. Yeah. It's the to, first, uh, you know, first vehicle on the bridge, just at the very, you know, uh, uh, entrance to the bridge. Yep. It got stuck there and you had a traffic jam of, of three Hanno Megs, one of which got blown up right away. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, your troops were just, stuck there they their firepower is kind of wasted they couldn't do much uh and uh, also we should mention too as part of the scenario i was able to take three eight inch lengths of trench oh, that's and right. th three uh gun emplacements like uh you know sandbag emplacement type deals 
Uh, so, yeah, but as soon as they crossed over, they would have got just a crap shot out of them by infantry anyway. So, uh, you're kind of in a pickle. You're, I think you're making the right choice to uh, keep them in the Hanomag. It just, I mean... Well, you just it, get delayed, right? Because you can't can't cross that bridge without really running. So you lose a turn. Yeah. And then you get shot up. And then yeah, it's and like, you know, it's like, well, I need to start inflicting some casualties on yourself. Now, the problem is because you're entrenched with the dug-in rule. Now, let me tell you. <laughs> hard to to kill things when they're entrenched. Like, they're, they're literally dug in. Even though they're, you know, not the greatest experience of troops... It is just so hard to hit, even yeah. you know. Just it's pretty much sevens, just always. Yeah, pretty much. And because I'm, I'm in hard cover mm -hmm. and dug in. That doubles my, I think dug in allows you to count as having gone down. Yeah. Without actually going down. So I can still fire. I I can't move. Obviously, if I move out of the trench, then I'm I'm not in it. And if I move away from being dug in, you know, I'm not dug in. So I'm kind of immobile if I want to keep that bonus. But, I mean, you just need sevens across the board to hit almost all of my forces. Yeah, and I wasn't hitting that much, right? So so once I kind of realized that, I was like, okay, I need to get my infantry across the board and get them onto the other side of the, the bridge and, if need be, assault. Right, that's where I'm yeah. going to do some work. Um, unfortunately, you know, with the traffic jam in the middle, um, infantry getting shot up as I'm trying to cross the board. On my left flank, you know, uh, was able to get the Stug and a Hanameg plus an infantry unit across the board, but still getting peppered. You know, so it was it was tough. Uh, the right side, I ended up losing that whole flank. Uh, just, I didn't have enough to put over there and I probably should have never put anything over there, but, uh, yeah, I kept, uh, I kept that unit of NKVD kind of hunkered down in reserve there, anticipating an infantry move mm -hmm. and it, 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 that strategy paid off. They were almost able to, I ran out of time. Uh, I didn't quite get across the bridge. I was basically in the middle of the river on the bridge with that squad, but they had, jumped out of their cover and assaulted that squad and I mean murdered them yeah so like you know going throughout the battle like we we played the full six rounds um, hours of game time which was awesome uh, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah just the battle itself and like our armies you know they for me my army the whole concept of it was okay, we're going to be mobile. We've got tons of machine guns to lay down firepower, you know, two in each squad, plus the Hanomag, plus the tank or tanks, um, you know, plus the uh, MMG team and stuff like that. So I should have a lot of firepower to start just concentrating fire. But I don't think I even really got to shoot my light machine guns in my units because every time they get come out, I would end up losing one, right? Due to you know, yeah. um, you know, uh, the possible exceptional shot or kill, right? It happened a few. Yeah. It happened a few times, and it was like, well, that was the waste of twenty points. You know, like it just yeah. it just happens, right? But I, and I know I focused a lot of fire on your engineers too. Yes, I was worried. The I did flavor. not want them. I did not want them to come across that bridge. Yeah, because yeah, that flamethrower would. I mean, it negates my cover save, right? My my dug in if it gets across, and that's the only thing I had going for me. So, I mean, those poor guys got shot dead to a man. Oh yeah, they got uh, they got wiped. They got wiped pretty quick. Um, and you know, if any. Anybody knows those kind of units, you know, engineers, pioneers, they know they're packing some heat. Um, 
So like losing them and then losing my command, my commander, losing the commander early, uh, definitely hurt. Um, and then the, of course, I would say the, the Panzer IV again stalled for that many turns, definitely hurt. But, um, I don't know, the, the infantry held their ground, uh, towards the end of the, the fight, really. I mean, um, ended up, I ended up getting the victory, right? Yep. It was, yep. uh, seven to five, I believe it was. So, something like that, yeah. Yeah. So I only beat him like two points, right? But... I mean, all, I only killed what two of your units? Yeah, those first, those first two. Oh yeah. no, there was three. There was, was one three? more. There was uh, that NKVD squad on the other side. Oh, that's right. That uh, assaulted your Stug, came out of hiding, assaulted his Stug, tried to, tried to uh, take him out. Didn't quite do it. I actually rolled really good for the uh, the hits, the hits. Uh, because you didn't move, so I only needed fours. But uh, when it came to the the roll for for the uh, penetrating itself, yeah, not so good. Just I think it was a one. Like yeah. I, <laughs> I believe I got five hits, so a plus five pen essentially, and then a d six, and I think I rolled a one or a two, so nothing. And uh, and they were kind of s- stuck in the open, and they got, I mean, just machine gunned down. I kind of knew that was a risk, but my tanks just weren't hitting anything. They were just... Uh, oh, you missed a lot. I missed a lot. I mean, they're inexperienced, so they're not, uh, not going to be hitting a lot anyway, or it makes it a little difficult, but... Uh, yeah, they were stinkers. They <laughs> they did they did not do their job. The uh, yeah, that artillery strike is the only thing that got me close. Uh, yeah, you hung, you hunkered down pretty good in the game, right? Yeah, and um, that was my whole thing. I wasn't going to get caught in the open trying to cross a bridge. My, my thought was if I could eliminate enough guys in a zone, in one of those bridge areas, then any units I have kind of there are going to try to jog across. And that's what I did. On the NKVD far uh, left side with the train bridge where you came across and I assaulted you, as mm-hmm. soon as that side was cleared out, I, I started hoofing those NKVD to try to get across. They didn't quite make it. They were, they were close, but not not quite. If we had gotten the other turn, they yes. they would have made it. Yeah, that was that was a big thing too. Like the game, because the game would end on a roll. Um, so uh, possible additional turn. Yeah, seventh turn. So um, so right on on sixth turn, uh, I had enough forces across the board to make the difference uh, for a victory for myself. Um, again, Jason's, uh, NKVD squad didn't quite make it on the other side and didn't kill quite enough either. And pretty much the role ended the match, but if it would have went a further turn, I would have definitely lost. I probably most, of, I probably all my infantry would have been wiped. Yeah. Cause I think each unit had four, like three or four guys in it. Yeah. Not very many. So, uh, and like one of them was sandwiched between two dug in 12 man squads. Yeah. <laughs> Plus a machine gun was right there, you know? So that, that squad was definitely, uh, I mean, they were just going to get murdered. Yeah. It was, it was a uh, risk. It was a risk I was taking on that sixth turn to hustle and get. Oh, it was where it over, paid off. Right. Yeah. Totally. That's what so, you had to do. But. You know, if I held back and it didn't go to sixth turn, I would have lost. If I pushed forward or seventh turn, you know, um, if I pushed forward and it went to seventh turn, I probably would have lost. Right? Just for the yeah, fact no, that you, you just the, actually, I not probably I would have lost just because of the amount of firepower you're able to to push onto my units, which because I had what uh, close to forty infantry and I think maybe seven of them made across the board. Yeah. So yeah. that tells you right there, like I took a lot of hits, right? 
Um, so otherwise though, like really great game, a lot of fun. We had a lot of good laughs and, and, uh, just it's really in the, oh, sorry. It was really in the air too. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, first turn, I felt like, well, this is Andy's just going to march over me. This isn't even going to be a game, (laughs) you know, like it's one of those battles where it seemed like I was like, you feel bad for playing so terribly, you know, like you want to actually offer a challenge but then second turn i go oh, okay okay it's coming around now yeah you know and then you got across with the unit and i was like oh my god now i'm losing and then it was really back and forth i really i love it when it's uh i love it when a game is like oh man if there's it is won or lost if we get this extra turn like it's that it's a close game right that close and um like we we talked about our armies with each other too, right? Like we mentioned what units we had and yeah, know, it wasn't like know. we were pulling a big surprise. Yeah, on, exactly. You the, know. the gotcha moment. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so like it, it was good. It was, uh, and all these missions that we've been doing have been really, really fun for that. Right. Cause it's, it, it's, it's so much, so much different compared to some of the other gaming systems out there. Um, especially being like a, you know, World War II historical kind of game with a lot of campaign books and a lot of specific missions for pretty much, um, you know, events that happened in the war. So yeah, yeah, it's it really ca- sorry. It really captured the feel, I think, for me. Oh, for sure, it did for sure, it did, and it's it's exciting to keep going forward, right, and actually get through the whole book kind of thing right um yeah so and who knows and it's also a prelude to what we kind of have slightly planned for the community as well so it lets us kind of play test some of these missions uh to bring into the the community and and get them rolling on those missions that we've already done as well right Mm -hmm. which is great and uh it's and honestly like the missions themselves are actually fairly balanced right yeah like, yeah it might not seem like it when you initially read into it but when the game's over it's like okay well you know like the dug in rule it's it's pretty pretty powerful but your your forces actually kind of suck to, yeah you know to be <laughs> lack of <laughs> words right like you, yeah you do not have quality troops and no which you you know you shouldn't you're just you know workers pretty much with rifles um but it made a big difference 100 yeah. percent, right and you're able to, to hold off a bit so um so that's pretty cool like i thought that was the interesting kind of take from this mission um and even just like uh the way the objectives are are laid out yep there's uh not one way to win it too you know like uh sometimes it's very obvious like okay this guy has to do this in order to win and now we just have to i have to try to do it and you have to try to stop it uh you know there was multiple things like and we did opposite strategies actually you know yep. yours was entirely about moving across the board even with your heavy hitters you know i kind of anticipated you would hold your tanks on your far side actually and drive your infantry up is what I, I kind of thought, uh, was, was going to happen. That's what I was, I was ready for. See, so, uh, I'm, I'm the guy that just goes straight down the middle with everything <laughs> <laughs> straight up the pipe, uh, you know, but, uh, and then, uh, and then I was all about, uh, like, I'm just going to go for kill points and if possible, hoof a guy or two over. And try to get yeah. a couple points that way, you know. And it also kind of that's how I saw the scenario. Like, uh, you know, we're defending the tractor factory, and not necessarily. I mean, these are people that earlier that day were, were you know, like working on their, you know, uh, friggin' metal lathes. Yeah. And then they're handed a rifle and told to go fight. You know. Oh, by the way. <laughs> Uh, an elite German unit is coming after us. Uh, go out there and deal with them. 
pretty sure they weren't planning on advancing across the open steppe, <laughs> you know, pushing them out of the city well, themselves. Uh, the bridges were choke points, right? They're perfect choke points, and um, it it proved it. So, you know, it was solid, solid plan that you had for just sticking to your defenses and trying to just knock out as much as you can, preventing me from coming over. So, yeah, it was good. It was good. It was a lot of fun. Um, it's it's nice to share the pictures and whatnot with the community as well, and uh, both here and abroad. Right, we got a lot of a lot of people loved Jason's terrain that he did up. Um, you know, got a lot of good uh, positive reactions and whatnot. So that was very grateful for seeing that, and I'm glad people enjoyed that on the Facebook pages and Instagram and all that jazz. So, um, but going into like, you know, finishing off the battle and kind of looking back at it now, you know, are there, are there things that I probably would have changed in the army or would change or will change in the army? Cause it's, it's, it's an army I kind of would enjoy to run normally. Mm -hmm. Um, but like we were talking about before, it was like, you know, maybe not taking two tanks and having a bit more infantry on the board. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or you know, yeah. like uh trucks instead of Hanomegs that to too. cut down cost. Yeah. You know, Hanomeg and really all of the armored uh uh personnel carriers are a bit steep. You know, and I get why, but uh but they do seem like they uh they don't quite get their, their bang for their buck in the game as it's written. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe trucks would have been a terrible idea in this scenario because they would have got, you know, mulched. Yeah, but well, it's uh, true. It, it depends on how I I went. Right. I could have, um, could have done the whole you know, refused flank kind of thing. Right. Where just pushed across one one side where you're not really uh, didn't have a heavy deployment, but. At the same time, you, you could have done the same thing to me on the other side, right? So yeah, I I tried to play deep in case there was some shenanigans. Hmm. So I had a uh, I did have those uh, NKVD guys were basically reserves. They were quite far back at the start and uh, hidden, like I mean, just hunkered behind crap, hmm. you know, so uh, they couldn't take any fire from anything. So yeah, I, I hope I would have planned. I planned for that, but uh, anyway, it was fun. It was good, and I love the the strategies and the all the the different ways that that could have gone down and the way it did go down. It was it mm -hmm. was really good. Mm -hmm. No, it was a lot of fun. So with that scenario three out of the way, with a German victory. We now move on to scenario four, which is uh, do not retreat. Now, this one pretty much uh, the 16th Panzer Division has pretty much entrenched itself uh, in the village of Rhinoch. And a General Hube, I believe it is. Hub? Hube? 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 H U B E. Um, orders his forces to form a hedgehog defense as Soviet forces close Soviet forces close in. So, yeah. um, so this is a guy, sorry, this is a guy that, uh, in his 16th Panzer division that basically rushed to the Volga north of the city. Yeah. And then previous scenario, scenario three sent a kind of a probing attack at the, uh, in the, in northern suburbs and and at the tractor factory, and uh, he kind of gets himself in a pickle because he goes so far ahead of the sixth army that uh, his salient kind of gets uh, cut off, yeah. and he's uh, he's stuck there. So he's he's forced to rely on uh, airdrops for supplies. Yep, yeah. the Luftwaffe, uh, you know, is a uh, Richtofen was the uh, the Luftwaffe commander in the area. 
interesting uh, f- fact, unrelated and not necessarily <laughs> important, but uh, uh, but uh, relative of uh, the Baron Richthofen from the First World War. Mm-hmm. So, ba 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 ba. Um. So going like with this. Uh, little description of of what the mission is or what you know the scenario kind of is it's interesting um still for the forces you're still using the armored camp group for the germans the soviets have uh, are able to pick out of the tractor factory or the not one step back theater selector um so it's a little different for you um i'm gonna try to keep my army as close as possible to what I had previously used against you. Uh, only difference is uh, Jason will still have 1,500 points, and I believe I am reduced to 1,000 points in this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, deployment, pretty much. I'm going to be anywhere on the board, 18 inches away from the north and south table edges, because that is where the Soviet forces are coming in from. Um, and the layout pretty much is, uh, a scattering of buildings in a small village of Rhinoch. And, uh, there's a whole bunch of hills and, um, kind of little, little bulkas. Yeah. So that's kind of the setup for that one. So that'll be pretty easy for us to do. Um, the interesting part of the, the scenario is the, there's three things for this one. There is fuel shortages, ammunition shortages, and supply drop rules, which are all on page 159. Um, it makes the game very, very interesting for the German side. <laughs> very unpredictable. Yeah. For the German side. So pretty much um, the... Shortages, so you get, you have to roll, I believe, for each of your vehicles. And it's a, I think it's a D6 plus a certain number. I think it's plus four maybe or something like that. But that's um, your supply of fuel. So you can use one of those supplies to actually move your vehicle. And once you're out your vehicle becomes immobilized for the rest of the game. So it's going to be, you know, you're going to have to really think about what you're doing with your your vehicles and stuff like that, right? Um, The ammunition shortages, so I believe it's up to half of your army is able to fire. The other half can't in that turn. So that'll be interesting as well and that's um that's from an ambush or an advance or a shooting order they they you know you have to decide who's going to be able to fire and who's not so and then the uh supply drop rules you pretty much get to roll on some charts and uh, or a chart and it's pretty neat because you end up uh, the Luftwaffe will like drop canisters, so 18 inches from like a command, your premature commander, your HQ, and it scatters, and you get to roll on this chart to see uh, what supplies actually drop. And as the German player, you obviously got to go grab them to to use them. And as the Soviet player, you're pretty much out there to destroy them. So, and keep in mind, this is also uh, for victory points at the end of the game. You'll get one point for either having it or one point for destroying it, depending on what side you're on. So, it's... uh, Yes, and uh, also the uh, HQ is worth three points. Yes. Yeah. To whoever controls it at the end. So the Germans get an HQ, they get to place... And then uh, uh, whoever controls it at the end of the game gets the three points. This is kind of what helps even out the fuel shortages and the ammunition shortages is that they start with three points. Yeah, pretty much. Right off the bat, I have to, I have to pony up the 
you know, the manpower to to capture those three points back. Yeah. So, so, uh, so it's neat on the the supply drop. Um, so on a, on a one to three, you you gain a fuel resupply. So the German player will receive three units of fuel to distribute to any of the vehicles that he's under his control. And then uh, on a four to six, you get the ammunition supply. So the ammunition shortage rule does not apply to the German player's forces for the remainder of this turn and the next turn. Mm -hmm. So if you recovered ammunition supply caster on turn four, uh, they don't suffer ammunition shortages until turn six begins. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, the drops actually start on turn three. Mm -hmm. So for those two turns, you're going to have to play around with what you got pretty much. So, um, this is going to be an interesting one for sure. It'll be hard. There's a lot of randomness. There's a lot of, uh, stuff up in the air for you. Mm -hmm. Literally. Uh, yeah. Literally up in the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and I got to, uh, yeah, I just got to kind of drive for the, drive for that three points deficit. And maybe yeah. it's, uh, ignoring the, the HQ and just trying to take out three canisters. But I, I, I think that's going to be difficult. Yeah. So. I, I think I, I pretty much have to get that HQ in order to get this victory. So you also get points, I think, for destroying my units. For oh, do I? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, if you, you control the HQ, you get three. Otherwise, it's default to me, so I'd get three. Um... Whoever controls it, I think you have three points. I'll receive one point for each supply canister recovered. You'll score uh, one VP for each German unit destroyed. Okay, so you actually don't even get points for the canisters. Oh, it's just for the units destroyed then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, obviously misread that, but. <laughs> um, yep. So yeah, and then pretty much. Whoever has the most VPs at the end of the uh, the game would win. So yeah, and I and I am going to use the no step back. Uh, they're First, not one the theater, one theater selector. Back. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Just to change it up a bit. So, so my first the first two scenarios were the dawn army or whatever this theater selector was the. Uh, the Dawn Army, and uh, the last one was the Tractor Factory, so this one will be the not one step back. Mm -hmm. I get an artillery advantage. Basically, artillery observers get to use their ability twice, kind of like the American uh, Air Observer. Mm, that's right. So uh, that will be a big one, and you can pay three points a model to have them... Uh, uh, fanatics to make them fanatics, uh, basically because they're going to get shot if they try to retreat. So, not one step back. Not yep, not one. <laughs> uh, what if I take uh, one step back and two steps forward? <laughs> nope, not one. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see that list for sure. Um, I kind of have an idea with my list, of course. Um, will it be as mobile as last? Well, I'll try to keep it as much as I can, the same as the other one, right? But, um, I do have some options. There are some artillery pieces and stuff like that I can use if I need to. Yeah. Uh, but again, a lot of Panzer Grenadiers still, uh, regular here veterans and infantry squads. Part of it too, is you're going to want to keep some units that you can move around to get those canisters. Yes. So you think, oh, well, I'm on defense, so I can just, I can just, uh, bunker down, but 
you you need those canisters, not just for the victory points. I mean, really, only having half your army shoot is a pickle you don't want to be in on turn four. Turn right. one, it probably doesn't matter. Yeah. Because usually most of your army doesn't get to shoot on turn one anyway. Turn two, maybe not so bad. But by the time you're on turn four and you have half your army not shooting, ugh. Especially after taking casualties, right? Yeah, yeah, you know. And then what a pickle to be. Like, I could just imagine so many scenarios where, well, shit, you just shot with your last unit that you're allowed to, and I still have three dice left. Mm -hmm. Now I can really, uh, you know, go for broke. I can take risks that I wouldn't normally take. 100%. Uh, so that, that for me would be the one I'm most afraid of. A vehicle getting immobilized sucks. But uh, most of them can overcome that. But then again, maybe you don't want to take a Stug then. Well, that, and that's the thing. Like, you're going to be coming to me now. Yeah, but if you got, so... a, if you got a Stug with a fixed turret or, like, no turret... <laughs> Yeah, he gets, uh, he gets immobilized. He's he's done pretty much, right? Yeah, but if you have a, you know, a Panzer IV, it's not such a big. I mean, it sucks, but it's not as bad. You know, if you can turn your turret, at least you can. As long as you got targets ahead of you and you're able to turn your turret, you'll be okay. But yeah, you might not be moving in that first two turns, anyways. Yeah. Who knows, yeah. right? Anyway, that's fine. I like that uh, dynamic. It's different than anything I've played before, so it'll be a learning experience, which which makes it fun. And we're out of the city again, so we're mm -hmm. we're in a, a far more open uh, kind of situation, uh, like we were basically like the the first scenario with the village in the center. Yeah, you know, only no bridge this time yeah. no freaking bridges <laughs> <laughs> no now we have a small little village to fight over so well small little village that'd be good that'd be good so yeah that's pretty much it for that next scenario um yeah we'll probably do that within the next month for sure um, but it's neat because I think some of these rules that we're trying out or in these scenarios, I think would be fun to even apply to some of our pickup games just to switch it up for, for players as well, right? Um, oh. especially, especially this one. Like this would be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, take little notes on that. And uh, who knows, maybe you guys listening, you guys have played these these rules and tried them out. You know, let us know. Uh, what you think. Uh, let us know if you've come across other ones that are quite dynamic for game settings and whatnot, or if maybe you even have your own scenarios, right? Um, Give me advice on how to beat Andy. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> That's my first victory. <laughs> give, me, give me lots of advice. You can't, it's got to be your last. That's so, how we have to rule. <laughs> so far, Jason has won two, and I have won this last one. So um, I'll take it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you guys uh, you know you've enjoyed the episode and like to hear more, just check us out again. You know on uh, Podbean or any other podcasting uh, system that you're on, uh, Facebook, YouTube, of course, if you're watching us, and uh, Instagram. And uh, look for more to come. We'll definitely have more of it happening. Uh, I know I got another. Uh, Another episode lined up here this week as well for um, talking with Cam about the Chinese army in one of the other books, The Empire in Flames. Ooh. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of uh, one of those hidden armies that you don't see or hear of. I played his army once, and it was a monster, actually. <laughs> They have some fun rules. I'm excited. Yeah, so it should be should be pretty good to to go over that and uh, the specifics of that army and and just his experience and whatnot with it, right? So, so yeah, that'd be good. 
So again, uh, like always, Jason, appreciate and thank you for jumping on. It's always fun. No worries. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and thank you all for joining in and listening to us and, uh, you know, checking us out. So keep on building, keep on playing, and, uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Trident Wargaming. Build it, paint it, play it.